Now, the BBC has been plunged into yet another anti-Semitism row after it was discovered that doctors central to a recent report on a Gaza hospital have history of hate and incitement of violence towards Jewish people. The emotionally charged material led the BBC's Israel Hamas coverage across all platforms for an entire day. The shocking revelation comes days after BBC Director General Tim Davey was called to defend the corporation, claiming that they were, in fact, a beacon for impartial journalism. Well, we're still joined, of course, by former government adviser Charlie Rowley. When you look at this, it's pretty horrific. The BBC did this big report here where Gaza hospital doctors are always held up as, you know, poor hospital doctors, you know, these hospitals are being bombed, it's all the Israelis, they're interrogating, intimidating Arab speakers. They turned around and said BBC Israeli soldiers were committing war crimes. And then, oh, wind the clock forward, six of the eight people that they spoke to have been openly cited as essentially being massive Hamas supporters. And we're not just saying, you know, sort of saying, oh, we, with what's going on, we think the people of Palestine are suffering. We are saying they went on Facebook to say things like, oh, Lord, turn every Palestinian missile into a Zionist casualty, the Jew defiled Jerusalem, we will avenge. I mean, this is not... These are not credible witnesses. If you're going to go around and say that uh, these doctors are saying that Israeli soldiers are committing war crimes, war crimes, you better make sure they're not associated with Hamas first. Totally. And let's not forget and beat about the bush here. You know, the UK has prescribed Hamas as a terrorist organisation. And the idea that then, uh, therefore, the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, goes and interviews these people uh, and to promote effectively and to give them a platform uh, for their views uh, when the conflict has to be handled with, you know, the best reporting possible, with sensitivities on both sides. It is a war zone. It is a conflict. It's um, uh, awful what's happening to innocent civilians that are obviously dying in terms of Gaza, but also the terrorist attack that took place uh, in Israel was equally as awful, and obviously Israel needs to defend itself. So you have to have accurate reporting. But when you are uh, in a country like the UK that has prescribed Hamas as a terrorist organisation, the UK's, you know, leading you know, broadcasting, presents itself as the leading Britain's, uh, British Broadcasting Corporation, to go in and give these people a platform over and above anything else mm. is just totally wrong. It uh, is wrong. And I want mm. to throw in a curveball. Mm. It's only a fairly recent policy by the BBC to hire locals as their foreign mm. correspondents. Mm. Now, having done quite a lot of foreign corresponding myself, the job is it's really important you have people from your own country. This isn't racist, folks, to mm. do that job yeah. because all the time when you're doing, when you're covering a story abroad, you're thinking, what will the people of Britain be familiar with? What will resonate with them? You're doing the story for your audience back home. These locals that they've suddenly take, taken to hiring, many of whom, mm. again, I'm not being racist, but they just don't even speak very good English. Uh, why should they? They're from a foreign country. But uh, if you're going to be on the BBC as a foreign correspondent, maybe you could speak English and maybe you could understand about Britain. Uh, yeah. There's a problem there. Mm. Yeah. Now, Charlie, do you fancy a job that earns you £100,000 a year where you work four days a week and you get to go around the United Kingdom and see all of its glorious sights, largely spending a lot of time in the countryside? Well, I've, that sounds very appealing, but I'd, I'd, still, I'd still like to come back here and join well, you from well, time that, to that, time. I'm afraid I... you've only got about a month of that left, but um, <laughs> if you do fancy, once you've finished uh, having all your fun on Talk TV, taking up that <laughs> position, then I would suggest you become a train driver mm. because that is the deal that they have now got. It's pretty staggering. When you look at this, we knew that paid, uh, train drivers weren't being paid a pittance, yeah. but uh, the average salary now is going to be 100000 after a deal to end this long-running dispute with one of the biggest... Uh, uh, franchises. Um, this is double. I mean, the sort of base salary is 67,000, so double the average pay of 34,000. But on top of that, it's four days of work, and every extra shift they do, they get paid 600 quid on top of that. I, I, I can see myself grand. at the front of a locomotive. Choo choo. I think 100 I'd be grand good for at train it. drivers. What yeah. do you think? Well, I think that is um, uh, over and above perhaps what your average punter would think is appropriate. But um, uh, given the you know the average salary is right, it's about 34, 36k in the, in, in the UK. Um, there are people who are. Um, I mean, look, you've, you've got to get around the country, and I'm, I'm sure there are. Uh, it must be very technical to drive a train. Um, I'm not technical enough at all, so I'd probably fail on the first hurdle. Um, uh, we probably wouldn't get through to the first stop, actually, if I was driving a train. Um, but I do think, um, you know, there has to be, um, uh, you know, it's a private company, so, you know, commercial decisions, you know, lead in a particular way. Um, but uh, I think most people would not 
assume yeah. that train drivers are on I that I think most money. people are applying to be one watching this. I'm <laughs> certainly going to join the queue. Yeah, you could either pay train drivers £100,000 or we could go with the new technological advancement and have driverless trains. Unbelievable. I don't think we should be paying them £100,000. We should be thinking about how to phase them out and get with the modern times. Trade unionism is so often Luddite. It's about resisting the advance of technology and that's what mm. this deal is all about. Uh, mm. We won't need train drivers for much longer. Well, just I think one thing that people want in this country is if you're going to earn that kind of salary is that you shouldn't have the strikes that go along with well, it because they will continue. Uh, you turn know, up they, to work. Turn, exactly. If you're going to be paid that amount, you know, make sure that the mm -hmm. trains run on time, that they constantly run, they continue to run, um, and we don't have this... Well, just move the trains, 